Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to my review for X-Men Days of Future Past. Oh boy, I was so excited to see this film. I'm a huge fan of the X-Men franchise. Of course, I don't read any of the books, but I used to watch the cartoon when I was on. I watched, of course, all the movies. I just started re-watching all the movies again. I really liked the first one, loved the second one. Didn't mind the third one, I thought it was kind of fun. Uh, uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, liked it at first, don't like it anymore, but I still watch it whenever it's on just because I, it, it just, it's just a bad movie I like to watch. It's, it's entertaining. Uh, the Wolverine, I really, really liked it. I thought that was a great film. And X-Men First Class, I actually love. I think that's, that might actually be my favorite X-Men movie. Until maybe today, who knows? You got you got to find out in my review. But anyway, I was really looking forward to this. It's been getting amazing reviews. I I mean, this summer has been excellent so far. I mean, Captain America, hell, even Spider Man, Godzilla. I mean, maybe it can go four for four. I don't know. I don't know. Let's find out in my review for X Men: Days of Future Past. All right, so the story for X Men: Days of Future Past is kind of complicated, so I'm just gonna do a very brief synopsis. The story here follows, of course, the X Men in the future. You have Wolverine, Storm, uh, Iceman, Kitty Pride, uh, of course, Magneto, and Doctor. Uh, I'm sorry, Doctor uh, Professor X. You got all those people, and they're trying to survive because the world has been taken over by these Sentinels, and these Sentinels hunt down humans, but also, I mean, I'm sorry, they hunt down mutants, but they also hunt down humans. And of course, the whole world has been taken over by these things, and they have to figure out how to stop them. So of course, the only way to stop them is to go back into the past, time travel, and not kill the person that invented it, but make sure they don't get killed, because Mystique kills the person that creates these things, and that everybody's just like, oh, see, these things are a threat. So they, of course, create what this guy was trying to create. So they have to make sure to make Mystique not kill this guy so this doesn't happen in the future. Understand? So, of course, they send Wolverine back because he's the only one that can uh, stand the, the torture of time travel or whatever. He goes back and he has to find the young Magneto and the young uh, Professor X and stop Mystique before it is too late. And, of course, along the way he meets up with other X-Men and, you know, blah, 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 and a bunch of time travel stuff. That's the story. Now, to say I like the story is a huge understatement because I absolutely love the story in this film. I love the time travel in this film. I love the characters. I love that we jump from the future to the past a lot. We don't spend a lot of time in the future, but you get to see enough of the future to go, wow, the Sentinels, who they took over a lot. They enslave people. They start killing people. The movie is actually kind of violent at times, and it's 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 real dark. I mean, not just because you know there's no light in the future. <laughs> there's like none. Not even that. I mean, it's just dark in subject matter. There's a lot of people just getting murdered that you've seen in in plastic at plast. What the hell? Past X Men films. That you, I mean, you just come to know and love, and you just see them get either beheaded or just killed straight up right in front of you. And I thought that was really, really dark and very, handled very well. And when, of course, you go into the past in the 1970s with Wolverine, it becomes even more interesting, a lot of fun. You get to see where Magneto was. You get to see what, what Professor X was doing. And, of course, they're very interesting and very well acted by, of course, James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, one of my favorite actors nowadays Michael Fassbender um, and of course Hugh Jackman's great but anyway uh, you get to see what they're doing and I really really love the jumping back and forth I love both sets of the time frame or whatever I love the 1970s and I love the future parts I, I think they're both great and when they jump back and forth I'm interested both uh, in just both time zones I guess and also what I really enjoyed is that the characters there is some X-Men in the film that you don't get to see too much of. I was very surprised to see that Storm is a very small character in this film, which is weird considering that she's a big character in X-Men 1, 2, and even 3. I mean, hell, it's Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, and Holly Berry. That's usually what you see in the, in those movies. She's a pretty big headliner, and here she's barely in it. She says a few lines, but that's it. I was very surprised. But um, besides like some X-Men cast members not being in the film too much, for the most part, all the main ones get a lot of dialogue, get a lot of uh, uh, dialogue thrown at each other, if you know what I mean. They, they get to interact a lot, and you get to see how their attitudes are 
to one another and I really really like that so you get to see who these characters are you get to see these characters get built up and I love that I really do love the characters in this film and of course the acting is incredible from pretty much everybody I mean of course Hugh Jackman, Michael Fassbender, uh, James McAvoy, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, uh, Peter Dinklage He's in this film. Um, uh, Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique. Um, just a bunch of actors in this film. Everybody I thought was fantastic in their roles. I couldn't think of one person that was like either mediocre or just good. Everybody was either great or fantastic. So there you go. I only have one, not even big problem. I have a medium sized problem in this film that I do have to address. And that is the relation between this movie and the other X-Men films. I cannot spoil it, but let me just say that there's some... Things that just don't make any sense when you compare it to the other X-Men films. And even if you kind of compare it to the comics. I can't spoil it, but let me just say it has to do with uh, Logan, Hugh Jackman, Wolverine, uh, and Vietnam, and maybe another specific character in the comics or in the movie, whatever you want to say. Just the relationship between him and that character didn't make any sense to me, especially since they already kind of showed you what their relationship is in the past in other X-Men films. It was a little confusing for me. Maybe it does make sense. I'm a little confused. But there's also other ones that I felt like they didn't address certain things from other X-Men films. And yes, I do know that Brian Singer was trying to just stay away from X-Men 3 and X-Men Origins. But still, it didn't really make too much sense. But I will say this. I really like that they had a big portion of this film addressing X-Men First Class. And they even told you what happened to a lot of the main characters of that film, which I... I'm not going to say anything. Let me just get. Let me just say I got a little emotional. So anyway, I really, really love this film. I really do, especially when it gets to the action and the special effects. I mean, the special effects are top-notch. It's straight up. I mean, they look amazing. Whenever, uh, I don't know, Colossus turns into his metal form or whatever, Pyro Dude turns into the fire guy and Iceman, whatever, and then all the special effects around it, all the action, it looks amazing. It really does. It's the best-looking X-Men film so far. But what I really love is the action. When it gets to the action, it's extremely well filmed, it's not too long, and it's not too action-y, meaning that there's not too many, like, fist fights or, like, overlong shots of just, like, Wolverine slashing at someone or whatever. There's not too many big action-y generic action scenes. When it gets to the action, it's very... It's very emotional. I mean, it puts a lot of emotion in the action. It's very tense. It's very suspenseful. And I really like that. There's a part at the end with Mystique and Magneto, which I really, really liked. And there really isn't much action going on. But I would actually consider it an action scene. I really liked it. So, um, the action in this, don't, don't expect it to be like, I don't know, uh, even Captain America, where Captain America is just like beating the shit out of Winter Soldier or something. Don't expect that. Especially since Winter Soldier ain't here. Sorry, cars with and bot. But um, I still really, really love the action in this film. So overall, I can't give this a 40 out of 40. I've been giving too many movies lately that score. Especially since I saw a couple of problems in this. Especially with the relation of the other films or whatever. But I'm going to give it a very close 40. I'm going to give it a 39 out of 40. I love this film and it's easily my favorite X-Men film. To date, so you should definitely check it out. It's making lots of money, so you should actually, you probably would have already saw it by now. But uh, yeah, there you go. There's my review for X Men Days of Future Past. I loved it. Go check it out in a theater near you. Thank you and goodbye.